This video is going to wrap up our reproductive block and it will be on the prostate. Your prostate is a gland that responds to hormones. Responds to hormones, namely androgens. And not only does it respond to hormone, but it also makes them. This is where a lot of your testosterone turns into DHT. Via what enzyme again? That'd be your 5-alpha reductase. So it deals a lot with hormones, but one of the main purposes of the prostate gland is to create fluid for semen. That is your prostate gland. Now you can have some pathology of your prostate gland. It can have the normal pathologies like trauma and infection. So infections, we call that prostitis. Prostitis, and that's similar to, and that's very similar to orchitis, inflammation of your testes. Causative agents are the same, so chlamydia, gonorrhea, you can have extension from a UTI, so E. coli. And symptoms are gonna be dysuria, fever, and prostate pain, which is a difficult thing to, I guess, pinpoint. So it'll more likely show up as pelvic or back pain. That's prostatitis that can be acute. It can also be chronic and chronic prostatitis. The cause of chronic prostatitis is not really clearly defined. A lot of times there can be no bacteria or infection, which is somewhat weird. So you can have all the same signs, but so dysuria, pelvic and back pain, but you can have plus or minus the fever and plus or minus, I guess, a causative organism which makes it difficult to, to really diagnose, but that is prostatitis. One of the main pathologies in um, prostate cancer, the most common and the most notable will be your benign prostatic hypertension or BPH. Affects many men and it usually affects older men. They hypothesize that it's due to either your prostate changing its way, changing the way it deals with hormone response or responding more heavily to hormones and thus growing and undergoing hyperplasia. So you get an enlarged prostate. And the location of that enlargement is very important. Your, your prostate is broken up into different sections. So if this is your prostate and your urethra run th runs through it, then there's a zone next to you, your urethra called the transitional zone. And it is this zone, this transitional zone that is undergoing hyperplasia and BPH. So your transitional zone enlarges. And because it enlarges, it compresses on your urethra and causes problems with urination. That's the classical sign. So um, dribbling, trouble initiating, trouble stopping, feeling like you haven't completed. So troubles urinating is the classical sign. And it's because of the compression due to the uh, growth of your transitional zone of your prostate. Now there's a whole host of complications that come from that. If you can't clear all the urine out, you're going to have urinary retention. So you're going to have you're going to have a type of incontinence called obstructive incontinence. Basically, something's obstructing it, and you can't clear all the urine. That retained urine is also going to predispose you to infections. It's going to cause your bladder to expand. It can cause bilateral hydronephrosis. I'm going to write all these down. So, hydronephrosis, nephrosis, increased risk of UTI. What else did I talk about? You have incontinence. And we're not even close to being done because your bladder has to work harder to compress against this tight, closed urethra. It's going to undergo hypertrophy, not hyperplasia. Your bladder is made out of a muscle. So it's a, it's a permanent cell, it can only grow, it can't grow more cells, it can only grow. So bladder hypertrophy. And you're gonna see all these really, really rough rugae in your bladder, that's from the hypertrophy. You can also have these little outpouching called diverticula, it's like the diverticula of your gut. Anytime you have strain, you can cause this outpouching, this diverticula, so I'll write diverticula. So all of these complications can arise just from that little compressed 
the reefer from BPH. One complication that doesn't arise, thankfully, from BPH is that hyperplasia in this case does not predispose you to cancer. We t <laughs> and I feel bad for saying this because we talked, I guess, in dozens of videos and how I emphasize the fact that the general principle is that hyperplasia because you're making more cells predisposes you to cancer. There's one little exception. I guess the, the golden rule of medicine that overrides all other rules is that there's always an exception. And this is the exception. It's so much of an exception that we put benign in front of hyperplasia. That's how much you want to emphasize that that hyperplasia is benign. That's why we call it benign prostatic hyperplasia. Just to denote that there's no chance that the hyperplasia turns into cancer. That's the exception to the rule. Other than that, most of the time, hyperplasia predisposes you to cancer. Now, what are the drugs that can help you with this? Well, some of the drugs are going to try and block androgens from, from I guess, hitting the receptors and causing that hyperplasia. So these are going to be things like 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. If you inhibit that 5-alpha reductase, you don't get DHT, that very powerful androgen, from binding into your prostate, causing hyperplasia. These are your finasteride and your, your tadafidil. Hold on, you've hopefully remember tadafidil. Isn't that the, the ED drug? Absolutely correct. For some reason or other, it also blocks 5A reductase inhibitor. So know that, well, that's the only ED drug. The other ones don't do it, but know that this also can help with BPH. So that blocks 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, stops those antigens from binding. You can also have it also helps with, so it helps with male pattern baldness. Baldness. Uh, male pattern baldness is associated with increased THD. So by blocking that, you can also help with that. For all the, the bad that DHT causes BPH, male pattern baldness, it is still at its core an androgen and the most powerful androgen at that. So when you block that androgen, you're gonna have decreased signs of that. So decrease libido, you're gonna have impotence, ED, you're gonna have gyno, all these signs. And any drug that causes ED know it well because they like to test it, that should be reason enough, but also any drugs that cause ED have very poor compliance clinically. And this causes ED. Another drug, that you can use for BPH if you don't want to touch this whole, I guess, hormonal pathway. You can do alpha antagonist. And these include tyrosine and tamsulosin. And these relax smooth muscles. They relax your bladder, your sphincter, and also your blood vessels. So by relaxing your bladder and your sphincter, it causes less strain and less urinary problems. So that's a kind of a non-hormonal way to do it. Because it also causes vasodilation, it can also help with people with hypertension. So a lot of these drugs are kind of double whammy drugs. This one helps with hypertension, this one helps with male pattern baldness. They all have their side effects, but these are the drugs we use. And then of course, if all else fails, you can do surgery. That is your BPH. Now let's move on to prostate cancer. Again, prostate cancer is not from BPH. We'll just say it's somewhat de novo. And before we talk about prostate cancer, let's talk about the epidemiology. Prostate cancer is very similar to breast cancer in females. So where breast cancer was the most common cancer in females and the second most common cause of cancer death. Well, in the same vein, prostate cancer is gonna be the most common cancer in males. That's the, that's the male signal, by the way. I, let's not do that. Let's just say males. That just doesn't look right. Uh, second most common, cancer death. And that's your epidemiology. Very important, again, to know what part of the prostate that it affects. Your prostate cancer usually affects your peripheral zone. So they call it the peripheral zone because it's on the periphery. And because of that, it doesn't compress your urethra. So urinary symptoms are very uncommon. If a, if a guy comes in with urinary symptoms and he's worried that he might have prostate cancer, it's more likely he has prostate hyperplasia. So prostate cancer affects the peripheries. 
And because it affects the peripheries, you can fill it on DRE. Yeah, that's what we're looking for on DRE. So peripheries or peripheral zone, and it likes to metastasize to the bone. The key thing you need to know about prostatic mets is that when it goes to the bone, it's osteoblastic. It actually builds, it actually causes sclerosis and builds bone. Not good bone, but it is osteoblastic. That is very key, very, very key. All other cancers that mess to the bone, which is basically all of them, break down bone, so they're osteoclastic. This is osteoblastic. So if you talk about a patient, you know they have the whole constellation of cancer, so old age, losing weight, etc. And they talk about bone mess and they say, and they state that that bone mess is osteoblastic, they don't need to say anything more. It's coming from the prostate. It's that pathognomonic. So osteoblastic mets is from the prostate. I can't stress that enough. Why it causes osteoblastic mets? Um, there's, they're not quite sure. Pro prostate cancer, they can produce uh, numerous substances, things like things that directly cause osteoblasts to proliferate like TGFB2 or indirectly cause it like prostate cancer raises your prostate specific antigen PSA and that can cleave PTHRP which can stop osteoclast. By the way you cut it, it, it just causes osteoblastic inflammation. I don't think they're gonna ask you why because no one really knows but I cannot stress the importance of that enough. Because it causes osteoblastic lesions, you're gonna receive raised ALP. As well as PSA, which I just talked about. That's, that's a kind of a non-specific prostate marker. ALP is seen in a lot of things like your, your biliary tree and your bone, but because it's seen in your bone, it's gonna be raised, and then raised PSA. Treatment is gonna be surgery and radiation, mainly. There's a lot of debate of whether or not you treat it because it's such a slow growing cancer. And the treatment side effects are very similar to the side effects of just having prostate cancer. So, so judging by how aggressive it is, some people don't even treat it at all. But just know surgery and radiation is a possible treatment. You can also do medical treatment. So let me erase this side. Medical treatment. And these all aim, again, to suppress androgens from growing the prostate cancer. You can have GnRH analogs, like Luprolide. Recall GnRH, if it's pulsatile, it can stimulate androgens, but if you do it at a basal level, it suppresses androgens, so you do Luprolide at a basal level, or you just take it constantly. You can have a drug called Flutamide, and that's a competitive inhibitor of the androgen receptor itself. So if this is your receptor, it just goes on. So competitive inhib of receptor. And by doing that, you kind of slow the growth of it. That's your medical management of prostate cancer. That is prostate pathology. That does it for this video. Also does it for this block. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.